Hello friends and welcome back to the new Homestead Project and today I'm going to share with you my experience refinishing this vintage 1950s enamel steel double drain board double basin sink so let's get started. When we decided to convert a 16 by 40 shed into a tiny home, one of the things that I really wanted to try to squeeze in was a double drain board sink. So the next step was to find one and find one in decent shape. So we started our hunt and we actually found one not far from here that was in very good condition and very, very reasonable but it did have a few significant chips in the enamel, so it was gonna have to be refinished. Plus, it, it had years of yellowing and it had been used, and so it did have some, um, some wear and tear on it. One of the other issues was on the underside. It did have some rust, but it wasn't what we considered deep pitting rust. It was just some rust that we were gonna have to address as well. So we were so tickled to find this one. And then once I got it home, then I had to do some research. My window's open <laughs> and the breeze is blowing and it feels good. Um, I had to do my research on the products that I was gonna have to decide on to use. And I actually settled on, after I read the reviews and watched their videos, and they have fantastic videos, how-to videos on their product, I settled on the EcoPel 2K. So you're gonna have to stay till the end, and I'm gonna fill you in on my thoughts on the product, if I liked it or if I didn't, was it user-friendly, and also I'm gonna fill you in on some tips and also feedback on some mistakes that I made that hopefully will help you avoid those same mistakes. So let's go ahead and get into the footage and we're going to go from the beginning all the way to the end and then I'll be back and I'll share some more thoughts with you. So here you see the products that we're going to use to give this sink a thorough cleaning. Now to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and dampen the sink and then I'm going to cover it pretty thoroughly with the Ajax powdered cleanser. Now what we're wanting to do with the powdered cleanser is we want to be sure to get just the everyday dirt and grime and from it sitting outside in the weather and just general dirt off of it. I'm going to take a Scotch heavy duty green scrubby and I'm going to thoroughly scrub the sink inside and out and once I'm done doing that, one thing that we want to be very sure of is we want to rinse it thoroughly because we want to get all of that residue off and get it ready for the next round of cleaning. And what we want to do is to ensure we get all these layers off so that the product will adhere to the sink when we're done. Now this is the Lysol Hydrochloric Acid Toilet Bowl Cleaner. And what it's going to do is it is actually going to remove the deep-seated minerals, the water minerals, and the things that just the general everyday scrubbing wouldn't remove. It's going to actually strip that off. And you see that I'm also wearing gloves here to protect my hands, and I'm using a new Scotch Green Heavy Duty Scrubby. Now this is a very important step. You want to be sure to rinse the hydrochloric acid off thoroughly. You don't want any of that residue on. So we're going to make sure that we give it an extra good rinsing and then I'm going to allow it to dry and then we're going to turn it over and what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the bottom for painting. So we're going to start with steel wool and I'm going to scrub it and you can see that it's a little bit rusty on the underside and we want to kind of smooth that down, get it good and clean, and also get it ready to paint. So this is acting as a scrubber and a sander at the same time. And so we want to be sure to thoroughly scrub it all over on the underneath, and then we're actually going to rinse this as well. We're going to rinse it thoroughly. And once it's dry, then we're going to tape it off where we don't want any overspray, and we're going to wipe it down and get all the dust off of it and get it ready to paint the bottom. Now, the product that I chose is this Rust-Oleum Farmhouse Black. Love the paint, had awful problems with the, the sprayer on the can. 
We actually ended up taking several cans back because they wouldn't empty and it was spilling all down the front. But once we got it painted, I was so pleased with it and I wanted it to look fresh and clean because it will be exposed some because the front will, under the sink will have a curtain on it. So you can see here that it really turned out thoroughly and the Rust-Oleum is going to help to prevent more rusting. Now here what we did is the chips on the sink itself, we actually covered them with just your regular Auto Bondo and then once that dried thoroughly, we sanded it down to get it to smooth and to shape to whatever section of the sink that it was on. So now we want to be sure and get all of that dust off because we want a completely clean, smooth sink and get it ready for the product. And so this is a damp rag, so I'm going to wipe it down thoroughly and then I'm going to allow it to dry. Now it's very important because the product is a self-leveling product that you level your sink front to back and side to side. That's going to give you the most chance for success as far as how the product actually lays. This is the product before we mix. I'm going to refer to on the videos from this point forward. I'm going to give you some down in the description box for mixing and actually applying the product because they're the pros. But I am showing you tidbits of how it works, how workable it is, uh, how the roller works. The, it, it's very forgiving. This is a very forgiving product. And I was so pleased, being an amateur that has never done this before, it was very user friendly. And I think the end product turned out absolutely gorgeous. Now you can see here, that I am just helping the product in the basin of the sink to make sure that the sides are covered. The roller actually pushes the product. We're not rolling it on like paint. We're not painting the sink. We're just moving the product around to make sure that it's thoroughly coating all surfaces on the sink. Now here you can see that I use the tip of the roller. What we're doing is we're gonna push out the excess in those recesses so, so that I'm able to keep the integrity of my drain board as well as possible. And it this really did work. You see how liquid it is. So forgiving, so easy, easy to work with. Their videos will help set you up for success and I highly recommend them. Now you'll see the product, the final product is absolutely gorgeous. It's a hard shell, a bright white, a mirror finish and I am thoroughly pleased with it and I think you will be too. Well first of all I want to tell you that I am extremely pleased with the results of the EcoPale 2K and I couldn't recommend it enough. Now I am not sponsored by them. I actually went on Amazon and purchased their product. It is made in America which is another plus but I was completely blown away by the finish on this sink. It is just beautiful. It's, it's mirror-like, it's shiny. Now we're looking at it at about 48 hours after I completed the project. Now, when I started pouring this project, now we'll say this, heat is your friend you want warmth when you go to working with this not cool weather or a cool room and the manufacturer actually recommends at least 75 degrees well we were hitting probably 90 92 and i'm in the actual shed it's not air conditioned and we live in the deep south and this is june and the humidity was brutal I was concerned that the humidity was going to be a problem with it drying. Now it says the manufacturer does stay 24 to 48 hours before you can use it. In the high humidity, I do recommend 48 hours because we came out at 24 hours and it was dry, but I detected the faintest little bit of tackiness to it. So I would recommend the full 48 hours before you use it. I was learning as I was going and I did make a few mistakes and I will share those with you right now. First of all, 
you've got vertical and horizontal surfaces. So I would highly recommend that you pour your vertical surfaces where the, the product actually will spill down evenly all the way across, which would mean that you would even, even on these edges, on the front edges and the side edges, you want to make sure that it is going to flow down evenly all the way around. And they send plenty of product to do this with. I probably used two thirds of what was sent on this sink maybe not even two-thirds. Uh, I would say uh, somewhere between a half and two-thirds, and I, I should have used more on my vertical edges. So I do have a few places that are maybe not covered quite as well. They're still covered. They still have a hard shell, but I know that they're there. They may be a little bit um, almost look like a run, not a severe run. So that's one thing that I wanted to share with you. Make sure you allow it to flow evenly on your vertical edges. Also, in, on a drain board sink like this, you have these, these insets right here for your water to drain. Now the product is self-leveling. So it's going to want to fill in these ridges or these resets, insets right here. So as you could see in the video, I actually took the roller that they provided and I took the, the edge of it, the end of it, and I would, from time to time, push the product out, which allowed it to go down into the sink and it also allowed it to eventually not keep flowing off of the higher edges into the bottom edges and it allowed for me to keep the integrity of the drain board a little bit better. Now, on this sink as well, you also have some soap dishes that drain and you want to pay attention to those and push the excess product out of those as well because if you don't it's going to fill in that and i did it to the best of my ability uh hindsight's always 2020. i could go back now knowing what i know now and i would have been a little more aggressive at it um, and gotten a little bit more out but it still has a slope and i feel like it will still flow out and also the little uh, opening where the water can flow out, I made sure that that stayed cleaned out. Now I did notice anytime you have a drop down such as, such as right here uh, on your drain board, these sinks have several drop downs on them in different places and my product ended up a little bit thick right here. I don't know if you can see, yeah you can see me. Uh, but just not knowing, I didn't push enough of the product out. Now, when you're rolling, you are actually not going to roll the product. You're actually going to use your roller to kind of help you push the product. You can use a, uh, like a, a plastic scraper or, and or the roller. I did use them both. And you'll see in some of the footage that um, I'm probably, you can tell I'm an amateur at it. So if you watch their videos, they're, those videos are phenomenal and I highly recommend them. And I will leave a link to a couple of them in the description box below so that you can watch their videos. They're the pros, I'm not. So, and also another tip, as the product is dripping down these edges, you wanna take from time to time, I waited a little while so that, uh, so some of it would, some of the excess would have already dripped off, but I did take my scraper just not up on the rounded edge here, just on the very bottom edge, I took my scraper and I wiped off the drops, the drips. And I actually should have gone back one last time. I did it several times. I should have gone back one last time and done it again. But I gotta be honest with you, this, this had a working time of about 45 minutes. It took me probably 30, 35 minutes. And with the heat and the humidity, I was done. I was so hot and dripping wet, but I was so happy to um, have my sink finished. So I should have come back probably about another half hour later and did a final scrape on the bottom um, and gotten some of the, there's not many, but I could have smoothed it out just a little bit more. So those are some things to keep in mind. Now your drains, you can see the, uh, you can see the, the openings for your faucet. Your drains, I did nothing to, to those. You want your product to flow all the way down to coat the edges because that's where you're gonna have rust most likely. Now, one of the selling points on this sink, besides the price, it was, uh, if, if memory 
serves me right. I think it was $100. Um, I, and we, we actually bought something else from the gentleman as well. We bought a, a steel bathtub that he had that actually we're using out in the pasture. But um, one of the things that you want to check when you're looking for these sinks is rust around your drain. Too much rust, and if, especially if there's any drain missing from rust, and you're just going to have problems. You're not, it's not going to seal and it's going to leak. This one was in almost perfect condition. So I was just, that was another point that I was like, I've got to have this sink. So it was a blessing to find it. It's a blessing to have it done now. And I'm so happy with it. I highly, highly recommend Ecopel 2000. I also highly recommend that you watch several of their how-to videos. Like I said, I'm the amateur and I made a lot of mistakes, but even at that, it was user-friendly enough that I had success. So until next time, I want to share these words with you. Don't ever forget that your Heavenly Father loves you. And we'll see you on the next video. God bless.